Hello. It's been a while since I've popped out an episode. Uh, I've been very lazy. It's been a while since I've recorded anything. It's been a while since I've even taken this mic out of the box. Uh, I mean, I have. I've done a, I've done an, I've recorded an episode in December, but I haven't got about to edit it yet. So that's coming soon. I just have to not be so lazy. Been busy over the holidays been busy with work been, been been lazy rather and then recently about two weeks ago I, I i had an injury tore my acl so then everything takes twice as long to do and twice as long to get to now anyway uh also last year i did this chat with my friend ryan uh ryan spence he's the creator uh <laughs> he's a ex-lawyer turned yogi turn slash podcaster now and he's moved back to the uk so uh, i hope you're setting up yourself you're adjusting well over there ryan if you're listening um so we did this Ooh, it's raining now you might hear a bit of rain anyway it is uh, we did this chat last year we talked about uh just random stuff talk about um, yoga talk about podcasting talk about my talked about my trip to nepal which uh, was, it was nice to talk about it a lot. You know, it's been a while and, you know, it just made me think about travel, which is so very nostalgic considering the the situation that we're all in now. I don't have to remind you what what's going on in the world. Anyway, you can listen to it. Uh, Ryan has graciously uh, done it, uh, created, uh, edited it. So I'm going to pop it on this pop- platform. You can listen to it on the Most Legal Podcast, which you're probably already listening to it now. Or you can go over to his uh, podcast thing and listen to it there. Same thing. Um, listen to his other episodes there as well. He's, he speaks to a lot of interesting people. And I think that's about it. Short and, short and easy intro. Just to, just, to, just, to, just to say hello again. It's been a while. Haven't spoken to, to the people, the Mostly Yogis out there. Hope you're well, hope you're doing well. More episodes to come. Meanwhile, here's one to to keep you entertained. Hope you enjoy it. I enjoyed it. Uh, that's it. Okay, till the next episode. Enjoy. It, it, let's say you have no goal. You're walking around in circles. Then what's the point? You're just going to freeze there. If you have a goal, but you're not moving forward, then what's the point? And it all it takes is just one step. One yes. step. And, and if all you can do is one step, then you will get there. It's just a matter of time. Welcome to the yoga den. Are you a stressed out cog in the corporate wheel? Do you find yourself asking, what am I doing and why am I doing it? Then the yoga den is the place for you. I'm your host, Ryan Spence, aka the Big Law Dropout. Writer, yoga teacher and your guide on the path to well-being through yoga. Yoga helped me find my purpose, change my mindset and my life. And in this podcast, I'll share how to live a life of intention, not reaction. Each week, I'll be talking to a variety of guests covering pearls of wisdom to help you figure out where you're heading is where you really want to go. I won't find your purpose for you, but I'll help you plan the route. So sit back and grab a drink. I've been expecting you. Hello. Welcome to episode 16 of the Yoga Den podcast. This week's PSA, I'd like to say, is whatever you're thinking of doing, just start. Don't overthink it. Don't look too far ahead. Just start. And if you can just start, take a step every day, be consistent, you'll be surprised at the progress that you can make. But for a lot of us, we get into our own heads. I know that I have. And you start to talk yourself out of the thing that you're trying to do. I'm not good enough. People like me just don't do that. What if I fail? And all of these thoughts churn around and six months, a year down the line, you're still in the same place you were in than you would have been if you just started. And this is something that I talk about with this week's guest, Aaron Tan. Aaron is a former copywriter in the ad world and now a yoga teacher at Hom Yoga here in Singapore. And we talked a little bit um, after class. I'd been to a few of his classes uh, and he runs his own podcast. So we kind of shared tips and geeked out on podcast stuff. And I was really pleased when Aaron agreed to come on the show. 
And what was interesting about this conversation is that it kind of went in a slightly different direction to what I had initially planned, which is great. We talked about him trekking in Nepal. We talked about teaching yoga. We talked about life in the ad world. Um, and we also talked about podcasting. But we tied all of those things together to the subject of this week's PSA, just start, of just getting down to it and of not overthinking the thing that it is that you want to do. So I really enjoyed this conversation with Aaron. I think that you can all take um, some great tips away from what he has to say. Um, we had a really good laugh both on and off the air. And yeah, I'm looking forward to talking to him again and, and keeping in touch and, and seeing how his, his career in the world of yoga progresses. So for now, sit back, grab a seat and let's do this. Today in the Yoga Den, we have Mr. Aaron Tan. Aaron, how are you doing? All right. Thank you for having me. It is such a great setup. I'm very excited. Thanks. It's good to, uh, good to have you here. Um, good to have a fellow podcaster. Um, <laughs> only, I think the second, um, Pedro was a podcaster, but you are, you are currently a live podcaster. So, um, yeah, it's, uh, it's good to have someone with some of the, uh, the technical know-how in the room and, uh, yeah, to but, geek out on. <laughs> <laughs> geek out is for sure because like, I feel like the setup that you have now is so impressive. Like compared to mine, mine is just like one mic. You got like your whole, you got your booms, you, you got your shock absorbers, your, your, your mixers and everything going on. It's so, it's so interesting to see this from, from this perspective. Yeah, no thanks. I mean, um, as we were saying before we came on air, I'm, I'm the type of person who, if I'm going to do something, I like to go big. And, uh, I was like, yeah, I'll just, I don't need all of this, but I'll just do it. So I invested the money and also, part of the investment process is just means that, that I have to do it. Otherwise I've wasted my cash. So yeah. Yeah. You're, like, you're accountable for it now. You have to do it. Really. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. So that's, that was my, my taking. So yeah, for anybody out there who's, who's thinking of starting a podcast and we'll probably talk a bit about that um, later in, in this episode, you don't have to uh, go as far as I've gone. You can literally start with your phone if you want to, but, uh, but yeah, as I say, I, uh, I went big because that's what I do. <laughs> Anyway, super, super um, cool to have you here. Um, we've kind of talked about um, doing this for a while. So good that you're now here with me. Thank so you. we, um, we met relatively recently, although I've known you um, or known of you for a little bit longer because obviously you t used to teach at one of the studios I used to go to. Uh, and now you teach at the studio that I, I currently go to and I I've taken a few of your classes. So um, yeah, it's kind of great to have this opportunity to kind of get deeper into some of the, the conversations that we've had. Let's start with telling me about your life before yoga. Uh, what were you doing and, and where were you doing it? Mm, the, the origin story that everybody indeed, asks. Indeed. Yes. Okay. Um, well, um, hello everybody that's listening to the Yoga Den. My name is Aaron. And uh, hmm, I think I, before, when I, I think my yoga journey started unintentionally. Right, like I think most people's yoga journeys started out unintentionally. It's always someone that they ask, like, "Hey, you want to come to a yoga class? Yeah. You want to experience the same thing I'm experiencing?" And so, my my girlfriend at the time, she was doing her TT training. Okay, and then she was like, she was mocking me, you know, right? You know, you know, <laughs> boyfriend duties. So you have to like, okay, yeah, I'll be your your guinea pig. Yeah. So so yoga back then to me was a very female thing. I I didn't really understood it. I was still very close minded to it. Sure. I was just stretching. Uh, I'll just do it and whatever. So then she, she was in my room. She was, she was, uh, you know, just running me through a sequence. Mm -hmm. I did it. And I, I had no idea what to, how to breathe. Okay. You know, I, I had no idea how to engage my Ujjayi breath. So then I was just panting mm -hmm. and then I was like sweating and then, you know, it's just kind of rookie mistakes that people make at the start. Oh yes. So then I was, uh, I was just doing it, but then the few things that I realized after that first session with her, that was my first ever yoga class mm -hmm. was with her, uh, was that it's not easy. It's not easy, right? And I, I think I, I realized that I was, I was actually quite naturally flexible for a guy. Like I, and okay. I liked it. Like I didn't know what I liked about it, but I liked it. The feeling or the maybe the... What's that? The flow state because yeah. you're focusing on balancing and all this kind of thing. So unintentionally, I was aware of it. But then I didn't know why I liked it. So I was just like, okay, I liked it. And the end. Then she mocked me a few times. You know, <laughs> she, she did it a few times and I, I was there. And then I learned a little bit more about Ujjahi. And I realized that how the breath helps me sustain into the whole like 20 minutes or 60 minutes of the practice. Yeah. Because if you're breathing from your mouth, you, you, you can't sustain. Yeah. So then these were some of the things that I like found out after that first class. 
So then uh, we broke up, and then that was it. That was that. Then I think a couple of months after that, a friend of mine who was she was she was a yoga practitioner. She went to YM. Then she asked me, hey, "You want to go to YM?" And I was like, "Okay, I'll go." So I went every Sunday, four p.m. for power class at okay. Old Orchard Twenty Two, and then and then once once a week or like one, maybe it's like twice a month. Then once a week, then twice a week, then three times a week, then twice a day, and so on and so on. All the way until it came to a point where like, mm, do I want to take my teacher training? That kind of thing. And I've okay. always had, yoga was always like a a side thing. Like I, I preferred martial arts and I'm, okay. Oh, okay. but disclaimer, I'm not very good at anything. I just like, <laughs> I just liked the idea of like, all right, I'm going to, I'm going to, it's more masculine. I liked it. I was yeah. going to do martial arts. So then yoga was like the complement of martial arts. And then, um, I think it, I, I wanted to do my TT, but then I was like, I'm going to do, I want to wait until I can do a handstand before I can do my TT. Cause that's, that will be my, my benchmark. That will make you a teacher. Yes. That will be my <laughs> teacher. Once I can hang, hang upside down, that will make me a great teacher. But, um, I think after hanging out with, with more yogis and mm-hmm. understanding what it really was about. And I think uh, uh, like, if you know, man, like man, was, I was very close to man. She's one of the teachers at YM okay. and she was the one that sort of in, nudged me to take it. So then that was when I took it. And then after you take it, then one thing leads to another and another. Like, oh, I have it now, so I might as well teach. Oh, I teach now, I might as well go full time, that kind of thing. Okay. Long, then that's how it started. Lah. Um, before before I was teaching, I was a copywriter. Okay, yeah. so for an ad agency or? A creative agency. Okay. So I was just writing like lifestyle articles and stuff like that. And I think I jumped around a few jobs before. I was always just doing random stuff. <laughs> Copywriting was my longest job before yoga, which is not, so yoga is my longest job. Uh-huh. Um, and then like, I, I, I liked copywriting. I thought like, because when I studied comms when I was in school, mm-hmm. I wanted to be a journalist. Okay. Because you want to change the world, yeah. you know, that kind of thing. You want to, you want to, yeah. <laughs> you want to go like, reveal you know share the truth you know stand up for the the minority or whatever yeah so you want to do that and then like i think i realized like copywriting was a i'm not to shit on like copywriters mm-hmm. it's it's still a, a you need to to write and write yeah. but it's more of like i felt like i was i didn't feel fulfilled because i was writing a lot about stuff that didn't resonate with me or didn't make sense to me like you had to promote products yeah. let's say right so then you have to write about how great the product is even if you don't believe it or the more research you do about it, the more you realize like, oh, this, why am I still pitching this thing when I know that it's a bad product? Like, yeah. I can't think of an example, but like say, 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 say something as simple, like say McDonald's. Yeah. If you, uh, if McDonald's asks you to write an article about how healthy it is, mm-hmm. then that doesn't make sense. Like, oh, uh, well, you can go eat the salad at McDonald's. <laughs> yeah. But, but, but you know that it's, it's, it's weird. It's, yeah. y- you're, you're, you're tricking people into eating unhealthy food or yeah. something along those lines. So I just felt it wasn't something that I enjoyed doing at that point. So then I think my, I stepped into teaching yoga part-time first. I think everybody starts out part-time first, mm-hmm. then one foot in, one foot out. And then like, okay, this, this is all right. Four classes a week, six classes a week. Then afterwards, like uh, a little bit more <laughs> from 50, 50 becomes 60, 40 to 70, 30. Then I just took the whole leap to be a full-time teacher. Okay. And here I am now. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So that's a good, a good story um, to kick off with. Um, and we'll start to unpack some of that as we, yes. uh, as we can see, I can see Ryan like <laughs> writing down stuff, ready to ask me stuff. Let's go. So were you teaching while you were a copywriter? When did the yoga kick in for you? Um, and was it something that you turned to because you were unfulfilled in your, in your job? Or mm. was that kind of like a, a byproduct? I think, I think yoga was a very, like, it played a lot of, it helped me in a very, like, a back, in the background okay. that I wasn't aware of. Yeah. Right? So, like, uh, in, like, just exercise or just for going for a run, you feel good. But then the after a practice, you feel a different kind of good, mm-hmm. which I wasn't aware of at the time that helped me like, um, just, just function like, as a, as a normal person. Like, you know, you, you, you feel a bit better after class. So then yeah. you go out into the world, you, you, you spread more good vibes. Yeah. Uh, wait, what was the question again? <laughs> 
how did how did yoga and my job what was it again this is the problem you see you speak to, you speak to podcasters they're so used to asking the questions that they didn't listen to the questions that they're I, was just, I was just going off on all the tangents no I, yeah. I guess it was so what's common for, for a lot of people is um or, or at least for, for a lot of the guests we've had on the show is they've sometimes turned to yoga because you know, i mean they're feeling burnt out in their job yoga oh. is kind of a release it's kind of a, a, a way to escape some of that stress um and then they kind of get deeper and deeper into their practice and then that kind of like moves them towards either teaching or, or, or just being more consistent. And I, I, so I was just trying to get a sense from you in terms of, in terms of timeline, really, whether it was that you were in copywriting and then that was stressful and unfulfilling. So you went to yoga or whether you were sort of doing yoga mm -hmm. before the copywriting and then you just kind of got deeper into it because of the job or, or, or I think, of anything else. I think I was already doing yoga on a regular basis before the copywriting job. Okay. But it was sort of during at the start of it or so, because yeah. that was when I sort of got a little bit more into it. Yeah. And the more you practice, you start out just focusing on the asanas, right? Yes. The physical practice of it. That's what that's what entices you in. You yeah. want to do. You just want to work out, right? Yeah. Know, yeah. And then the more you practice, the more you realize, uh, or more things start to reveal itself, like um, the spiritual side of it, or the ethical side of it. You learn a little bit more about the philosophy behind it and why you do things and. And it all translates through the physical practice. It translates in many different ways, in different layers. So then I think I compared it from the person that I'm becoming from yoga and, and who I was before and, and, and like, where am I moving towards? Yeah. And then like stuff like, say, like I was talking about the McDonald's thing mm -hmm. about like, uh, you know, is this, this doesn't sit well yeah. with me. Start to question. And, and, and like I start to question these things. And when you question yourself, then your things start to shift already. You're not so convi convic convinced or convict. The conviction isn't there anymore. Yeah. When you ask yourself, what am I doing here? Something is wrong already. You know what I mean? And yeah. that, that question is dangerous because sometimes you can't ask yourself that question. It's in order to power through ignorance, right? You yes. just like, yeah, it's fine. I didn't, I just do the job. This is under money and, and don't, don't question it. But then when you question it, then yeah, why am I here? What am I doing? Why am I wasting my time? Oh no, am I wasting my time? Shit, why am I making the right decision? And it starts to repel. And then because of that, I mean, I'm not saying my, my old job was, was bad. I really enjoyed it. I still hang out with them sometimes when I go back to the office. But it's, it's, um, it just didn't resonate with me. I'll just put it that way. Yeah, yeah it's, a, it's a personal thing. And I think that people shouldn't take from anything that I say here or anything that any of the guests say here that one way is good and one way is bad because that's not it. It, it comes down to who are you as an individual right. and what works for you. And that's what you have to look at. And that's what, at least for me, and it sounds like for you, yoga starts to get you to sort of question. And, and once you do start to question it, it's like, it's an awakening. And once you're awake, it's very hard to go back to sleep. Once you're you know. aware, once the truth is revealed to you, it's hard to unsee the truth. Exactly, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah exactly. Um, and so in terms of, um, copywriting and feeling unfulfilled, um, because, um, I, I like, I mean, I like the, the analogy you sort of made with McDonald's, but it, it could be with anything else. What, what was your average day like as a copywriter? I think hmm, it's, it's the same, like how anybody in an, in an, in a regular corporate or just normal job where yeah. you're at a desk, you're at a computer. I think any job that you're doing you're at the computer mm -hmm. for like eight hours a day. Right. You're, you're typing and looking at statistics, reading <laughs> articles, whatever you're supposed to do. And that's pretty much it. Just different. Like you, you, any job you're at the desk on a computer. That's how any job gets done. Unless you're like a barista or a yeah. bartender or something like that. So then that's 90% of the, the, what you do. So then that's pretty much it. Like, yeah, <laughs> I'm at the computer type, type, typing. Um, and it's, and it's like, this, this, they say like sitting is the new smoking, yes. right? Because you're just sitting there, you're hunching over and you're looking at all the blue light. You're not being out there in the environment. You're not meeting people. You're not socializing. You're, yeah. not, you're not fulfilling what you need to fulfill as a human being. Yes. We need to, yeah, we need to still do the work, but then how do we find balance or like, uh, you know, just, you, you, we can't go around saying like, quit your job because you're at a computer. That's not the point. Like, it's just... Through the yoga, you you start to be aware of certain things about yourself, right? It reveals, it heightens your awareness. So then you're able to be aware of what you want or who you are. Yep. And then through that, 
awareness, the awakening, then you sort of realize, mm, am I satisfied here? Yeah. And if you are, then that's great because there is no right or wrong. It's not saying like what you're doing is bad. You can still be a copywriter or a journalist and and make an impact. Yes. But then if let's say you're, or you can be any, any desk jockey and just make an impact. Yeah. But it's what, what resonates with you and can you fulfill that part of your, 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 you know, that seeking because everybody's searching for something. Oh, exactly. Are you, you're right. Yeah. No, everyone is, everyone is searching. Um, and again, what, what's interesting about that is that, so I don't know, take your regular corporate job. I don't know what that is. Okay. Let's take lawyer because that's what I right. was. People have a certain view of, of what being a lawyer is. But as a copywriter, people have a certain view and copywriting. And I have friends who are in advertising and marketing and graphic design always seems one of the cool jobs from the outside mm -hmm. because you, you're in a creative space, you're in a creative industry. And actually what's, um, what I find interesting uh, uh, about this conversation and the others that I've had is that it doesn't matter what it looks like from the outside. It's all about what the person inside of it is feeling towards it. And yeah, you're still in a corporate environment. You're still, as you said, having to kind of do things that maybe you don't agree with or maybe aren't in line mm -hmm. with your values. You're still having to sort of, condition or sell things to people do you know what i mean the ultimate aim is still to just make money right and so the fact that it looks cool and creative from the outside doesn't necessarily change how it makes you feel as an individual inside that situation that's, that, that's true that that is true but it's unfortunate like how nowadays jobs it, it does matter whether it looks cool on the outside because <laughs> people go around like telling people like yeah i'm a lawyer yeah. and, and and it's supposed to mean something like like, you know, a you, to yeah, it, yeah, it's a yeah, status. It's not cool, but it's, there's a status it, it, to it. It's cool. It's a little cool. It's a little bit cool. Like if you tell someone, yeah, I, I do this for, I'm an astronaut. That's, yeah. kind, that's, that's cool. cool. That's yeah. cool. Yeah. But it also doesn't mean anything. It doesn't mean anything about you. No. Right? Like maybe back in the day or the older generation would think, oh yeah, data lawyer, data, data doctor, because these people are supposed to be smart and clever and whatever. Well, sure. You need to be of a certain intellect to be able to, 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 to do that job. Yeah. But that doesn't mean that the 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 I don't know the bus boy or the what the bus driver is anybody less. It's just the job that doesn't define you. And if you think that the job defines you, then you're moving in this direction that isn't true to yourself. You're thinking that like I want to I'm a creative person, so that I gotta be in a a job to emphasize that. Then then you're living a false identity. You're not living your true self anymore. Because then if you take away that role, then who are you? That is a, a very poignant point because it's something that um, I realize with hindsight as I've kind of looked back now. Hashtag, left, hashtag big law dropout. Big law dropout. <laughs> exactly. Now I've sort of looked back and it's one of the key things with heart. And I, I realized it pretty quickly after, after getting out is that one, I wasn't fully myself. There were definitely parts of me which weren't really present in that period. I didn't realize that at the time, um, but I definitely realized that going back a key point is, is creativity. I was creative before I used to be in music and then I got into law and it's like that creative sort of part of me just didn't really come out. Um, and I was definitely, um, tied up in the status of being a lawyer in, in, in big law. I mean, state, it was my identity. You go, you introduce yourself. And, and I, I do this exercise with my coaching clients. I say, okay, introduce yourself to me. And inevitably the, their introduction starts with their name and then the job that they do. And that's kind of like a large part of it. Maybe if they're a parent, they might mention that, but that's it. Then I get them to introduce themselves. Don't talk about what you what you do, what your job is. And it's awkward because we're mm. so used to doing it. Like that's kind of who we are. And so if that's who you are, if that's then taken away and we, we, we sort of seeing it now, lots of people are being sort of laid off, maybe done with, with the pandemic and, and everything else, people struggle because yeah. it's like, well, who am I without the identity of lawyer at X firm or senior vice president at X bank or, or whatever it is. So knowing who we are, when you ask somebody, who are you? It sounds a very straightforward question, but actually it's not. Because people struggle to answer the question. The the question is the same. Who are uh, who are you, right? Or, or what defines you? But then the answer is always the people mis misinterpret the answer as like, oh, I am the lawyer, I yeah. am the banker. But we're asking not about your your ego self, your true oh, yeah. self. Like who? How, like how are you? Like I, I was having this conversation with my friend the other day. I'm not asking how are you. I'm asking how are you? Yeah. You know, and that's the <laughs> you with the with the capital Y. You know. Yeah. And the 
as much as there is a good a, a, a reputation that comes with say i'm a lawyer i'm a banker there's also a negative connotation that comes with that like if oh oh you're a banker so you're super high strung yeah. you're like always out like you're hustling all this kind of thing like it, it comes with that identity so then what if you're someone that's really nice but you're a lawyer like, oh your lawyers are all evil you're all gonna hurt. so yeah. I, I don't really like you it, it's so strange that but it's what people people suss you out by like when yeah. you when people ask what you do for a living, they're not asking what you actually do. They're asking whether you are of status or, yeah. you're, or, or are you someone important. And the fact that we do judge it that way, it's it's a bit unfortunate. But it's like, say, even if you if like someone told me like, oh, I'm a lawyer, I would still think like, oh, okay, maybe this guy is is it's it's a uh, he's he's intelligent. At least I know that because that is a a benchmark. Okay. But that but then I will still like. Um, it's up to me to find out who this person or whether he's nice or whether I want to make the job doesn't define the exactly. person. Yeah. And yeah. it shouldn't. Yeah. No, it shouldn't. And, um, it, it comes down to, um, I guess self-worth really. Ooh, um, nice. Because if you, if you value yourself, if you know that you, you're enough as you are, if you know your inherent worth, then it doesn't matter that, the shell of it. Uh, no, yeah. it doesn't because that that's what you carry with you. So whatever you're doing. And so you can just sort of say, well, this is how I am. This is kind of what I do. And it doesn't matter because it doesn't define you. And it's not something that we really talk about. It's definitely not something that I thought of. I mean, when I kind of made it to be a lawyer, particularly from, from the background that I was from, it was like this almost a, a badge of honor really. And it's not that it's not that I lauded it over people or I was arrogant, but it was just something that, it was nice to say when people say, what do you do? I'm a lawyer, you know what I mean? Or, and I'm a lawyer at X firm or I do this or I do that. Mm. And even as I got later into my career and I started to sort of be a little bit unhappy and a little bit disillusioned because I was so tied up with that. It was so in integral to who I was. It was very hard to see mm. beyond that, beyond doing anything else. And even when I started to think about, I really do like yoga and I kind of like to be a yoga teacher because also other people project their fears onto you. So there's always a question of, yeah, but how are you going to make money? And can't you just do it part time? And can't you just do this? And can't you just do that? Without sort of taking stock of the fact that, but that's probably what really makes you tick. And that's probably really who you are. And mm -hmm. it's probably the way that you can make the impact that you want to make. And maybe law isn't it, even though it is for you, maybe that's what it, it isn't that for me. That's true. That's true. I mean, like you, you, you still went down this route and like th that route has, given you certain skills which of has course. which has helped you in the future so it's not like a bad choice it's just like through that awareness you made the right decision at the right time and then like you're moving forward from it or whatever lah, you know yeah no exactly um and so yeah your identity isn't who isn't what you do um your identity is as we said who you are but your, finding out who you are um takes work <laughs> yeah and your and your identity will always change like yes. you will always change yes. yeah we're, we're supposed to we're supposed yeah. to evolve and yeah, going back to, to, to your, your copywriting, not, not to sort of blame your, your industry for that, but we are in a time where we are conditioned to, um, to aspire to comfort and to aspire to convenience. And the issue with that is that if we're permanently in this state of comfort, in this comfort zone, we don't take any risks and we don't grow. We don't see what we can really do, what we're really capable of. And so, and that comes down to doing the work to find out who you really are, because it's not easy. I mean, it took me a couple of years, maybe, of trial and error, of sort of trying to sort of read different things. And again, it's one thing to read the stuff, but it's another thing to actually take the action, because the action's difficult. I remember right. reading sort of personal development books, be like, yeah, yeah, that sounds really interesting. And then kind of giving you steps to what to do and how to do certain things like but well, that's too hard. And I mean, I have my own habits and I want to continue doing the same thing I was always doing. But then if you do that, you just get the same results. No, there's no growth in safety. Yes. Um, hmm. I think I, I had a thought. Okay. <laughs> I had a thought, but I lost it. Um, what were, we what, were you, what were we talking about just now? What do you just say? No growth in safety. It's about um, safety, safety. being conditioned to. Oh, okay. yeah, no, comfort. stepping into your, uh, you, you were saying like, it takes action, right? Yes. Okay, yes, that's my thought. Okay, so um, it's hard to do the thing that that like to 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 explore. I think mm -hmm. what I wanted to say was that try new things, right? Try new things because there's so many things in the world 
that you've never tried. And if you've never tried it, you won't know whether you like it. Exactly. Whether is it yoga, whether is it like, I don't know, skiing or like cooking or baking, whatever it is, right? Yeah. Playing the guitar. You will never know what you enjoy until you try it. So I think it's about being open to it. Like say, when I first started yoga, I was like, ah, it's for girls. Most people will think that way, right? Yeah. But then like, I can fast forward to, to a few years later and here I am. So had I never experienced that, I would have never gone down this path like of who I am today. I would have still been maybe working in a corporate job or, or whatever. Yeah. And and I can't even see myself going back in that life now. And But back then, I could never see myself being yes. in this space. So it's all about not holding on to, say, identity. Oh, I'm, I'm a guy. I'm a man's man. I don't do this kind of thing or, yeah. or whatever. I, I don't really want to do it. If you keep um, defending who you are and not be open-minded to these things, you're not showing yourself any respect because you need to experience all these different things to, to know that, okay, for, for, for sure, I don't like this or I like this and maybe I want to pursue this. And if you give yourself that chance, you open up that door to, to experience because life is all about experiencing all new all things. Exactly. So then, yeah. So then through that experience, through that learning journey, what is it? Yoga or anything else that you do, it, it, it brings you to your higher self, right? Yes. That, that work that you put in. So say being a father, mm -hmm. it forces you to be a, in a, of a certain caliber, right? You need to wake up in the morning. You need to, to be responsible. You need to yeah. put food on the table. So then that brings you to your higher self. Yeah. So if you fuck off and just like, I'm going to watch Netflix all day, <laughs> you're not going to grow. You're not going to do anything. No. Yeah. But you are just being stimulated. You're not experiencing anything. And the experience comes with the good and with the bad. Mm -hmm. You have to experience hardship. You have to experience all these bad things to grow. Because growth doesn't come from comfort. No. Yeah. Because, yeah, no, perfectly. I mean, I mean, you put it perfectly because, yeah, if you're doing the same thing, then there was no challenge. Right. Um, and so if there's no challenge, then how can you grow? Mm. Um, and how can you, how, how can you figure out what you are actually capable of? And in terms of yoga, because as you said, for a lot of people who maybe haven't tried yoga or, or maybe they've tried it and, and sort of walked away mm. from it because people want to just want to be good at stuff. Um, ah. you can't be good at something the first time you do it. Right. And I mean, it, you, you obviously said I'm, I'm a father and I look at my kids and they'll just try stuff and they'll try it again. I mean, they'll try and jump from one sofa to another sofa, yeah. not thinking about it, just try it. And if they don't do it, they'll try it again and they'll try it again. And we seem to lose that as we, um, as we get older and with yoga, you know I mean? And, and you'll have heard it. I'm sure every yoga teacher hears it. Oh, I can't do yoga because I'm not flexible. Yeah. And the, the thing that, that I always come back with is, you know I mean? The flexibility of the body means nothing without flexibility of the mind. You've got to have that open mind and you've got to just come to the mat mm. um, and see where it takes you. Just like in life, you've just got to go, uh, if you're really into something, just try it and see where it takes you. And just start, which brings me to, I want to sort of talk to you about that in relation to podcast mm. because um, like, like me, you, you have a podcast um, and you start, I think you started a few months before I did. You started no, I, started, year, I started like last two years ago. Right, okay. I think, yeah. yeah. Um, and I don't know how it was for you, but the idea of walking out of a, a, a sort of a big law firm where I'd been for 11 years and effectively you can almost hide behind a corporate brand in a sense, because even when you're putting stuff out there, you're putting it out in, in the name mm. of the brand. Okay, okay. But when you're doing your own thing, it's you. You're putting yourself out there. You're putting mm. out your thoughts and your feelings and your opinions. And so then you're sort of open to whatever anyone wants to say about that. So, and that can put a lot of people off, that, that sort of fear. Mm. What made you decide to to start a podcast and, and how how was it for you? Did you, was it something that you just kind of like, were like, yeah, I'm going to do this? Or did you have a lot of sort of self-doubt and, Sort of limiting beliefs I, about that. I I never thought about the self doubt part until maybe in the middle of stages because the first time I, I listened to a lot of podcasts, especially like the Joe Joe Rogan podcast, uh -huh. and I I have a lot of interesting conversations with my friends. So then I was like, I wish I could share this. I, sh I wish I could share what we just talked about with like say me and my friend yeah. to other people because it was it was so helpful for me. And I traveled a lot back then. So like, oh, I met all these interesting people and I wanted to just well, like, like, hear all these conversations. I want to share all these conversations that I had. Uh -huh. So then Joe Rogan's podcast is very conversational style. It's just like him and his friends just chit-chatting and then it just becomes so profound. 
So then I, I was like, okay, I'm going to start my own one. I'm going to call it the Aaron show because I didn't have one. <laughs> so I bought my mic and I, I, and I bought it like maybe three, four years ago. And then I just recorded it like two or three episodes with my friends. We okay. just drank and then we just chit chat. Okay. And it was, it was horrible. Like <laughs> <laughs> it was horrible. And, and, uh, I just sort of like put it down and I and ne- never, never amounted to anything. Okay. And then I think when I went, when I got hired at yoga movement, then I was like, okay, I have access to all these yoga teachers. And, and, and part of like, when I, when I wanted to record my first Aaron show, right? The first yeah. one, there were a lot of yogis that I wanted to chat with anyway. So I, was, I figured like, okay, I, I'm not anyone famous. Mm-hmm. So I don't want to call it the Aaron show. Cause then it's not going to, you know, you know what it is, yeah. you, you know? So, okay, maybe I'll just make it like about yoga. So, but I don't want to only talk about yoga. Yeah. So then I was like deliberating, okay, what about, and then blah, blah, blah. And then like, so the title of it is called Mostly, mostly Yoga. yoga yeah. So Mostly Yoga uh, talks about yoga and also like mostly about yoga, but also about other stuff. So it keeps it open. Yeah. So then it's perfect. I can talk about like fucking anything yeah. and about yoga. So, I, so it's like a perfect. And then I had access to all these yoga teachers. So I was like, okay, I'm going to talk to you, 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 you. Um, the first time I did it, it was with episode one was with Vera and then like I had my mic and I didn't, I didn't turn it on properly. So it was only facing me. So then you know, it was facing her uh-huh. and then my voice was soft. It was, and then there was the air con, there was a rumbling, there was all <laughs> these different mistakes that I'm making. Yeah. And then I was like, oh man, I'm, the, the, the conversation was great, but then like the quality was shit. So yeah. I think I don't want to post it. Uh, this is, this, uh, fuck it, for, forget it. This is dumb. Okay. Then I was like, okay, now I'm just going to post it. Cause I, I was trying to make my first episode perfect. perfect. Yeah. Like anybody, right? The first time you want it to be perfect. And then when I was recording my intros, I kept, I had a script. Okay. Hi guys, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. But then like, I kept messing up my lines and then I had to, okay, cut, say it again. And then it just felt so artificial. So I had, so now I just do point forms or I just like, if I mess up, I'll just like make fun of myself for it. Yeah. And then I'll just wing it. And it sounds more natural when I do it, which is what I wanted, which is the point of it. I wanted yeah. to make my podcast as authentic as I can. And it's not like a, it's not like a radio show. Like, Hey, welcome to like, <laughs> it's 9am at the blah, 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 blah. And then you have that fake voice. Yeah. So I don't like, I, I it's weird for me, you know? And, and I, I wanted to maintain that authenticity and that honesty in, in my, in my podcast. So then why, why do I have to script it? Why, I, I should be able to honor that as well. Right. So I just speak and like, okay, yeah, these are my sponsors, blah, blah. Yeah. I, I, it's, it's, it's 8 PM today. I'm feeling hungry. I'm feeling hot. Oh, my mom's outside, blah, blah, blah. And then like, if sometimes there's a bit of noises, I'll cut it out. But then I live, I live near the, the road. So then you're going to hear bikes all the time. Yeah. <laughs> and I got annoyed every time when a bike drove by, I had to stop. And then like, but then the bikes would never stop. So then I just kept like, whatever, I'll leave it in. Yeah. And then when I listen back to it, there's a, there's a little like, it's a, it's a, it's a nice touch for some reason. It just feels natural. Yes. And I liked that vibe. Yeah. And then I wasn't stressing out over like making it perfect because it's never going to be perfect. But it, through that imperfection, it was authentic to me. So then I liked it. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I, I liked it. So I discovered your podcast when I was thinking of starting my own. And um, I think I've said on the show before, was saying that there were no yoga podcasts out there and then, found that there were some, I was like, oh yeah, but it's fine. They're all American. And then found some in the UK and yeah. then found yours here. I was like, oh, okay, there are. Um, but that was one thing that drew me to it is it, it was very, it was very natural. It wasn't polished yeah. and you could tell that somebody wasn't trying to put on an act. They were just yeah. being themselves. And yeah, I've kind of heard ones where you've kind of like talks about your, your mum making dinner in the background. Yeah, or whatever. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you start to, it's like anything, you, you start to follow somebody down this sort of path. You start yeah. to feel like you kind of get to know them a little bit. And actually, so therefore it makes it easier. So when I, when I kind of first introduced myself to you at my, at my teacher training, actually, mm. and you just were just about to teach a class, yeah, yeah. it wasn't, it wasn't like you're going to go and sort of introduce yourself to someone who's got this podcast and I don't know what they're going to be like or whatever. I kind of also almost felt like I knew a bit about who That's, you were and what yeah. you were, um, which was great. And, you know, I mean, we had a good chat and then we subsequently chatted from right. then and you're the person who's on the podcast. You're not a, you're not a different person. Right. But one of the, the, the reason why I was sort of talking about that and you kind of touched on some of those points along the way is this, this sort of thought that we need to be perfect 
Um, and if it's not perfect, then we're not going to do it. Mm. You know what I mean? If, if it's not perfect, we're not going to put it out. But I listened to something the other day and it's, it's something which, which I definitely subscribe to. It was, it was a really big YouTuber. Um, he's now got sort of thousands, if not millions of subscribers. And he was talking about his early videos and he's saying that, yeah, he's left them up because it shows mm. growth. And I think that people want to see that progress. And by showing people that progress, then they were like, okay, well, they weren't perfect at the start. No matter how big they are now, everybody started somewhere. And if people just hung on to that, I think they would start more things, right, whatever right. it is. It doesn't have to be a podcast. You don't have to be a yoga teacher. Whatever it is that you're thinking now, I'd quite like to try that. You know what I mean? Just, just go and try it. And yeah, you'll likely be awful at it because you haven't done it yeah. before. That's perfect. And that's normal. fine. That's yeah, fine. Um, but you practice and that consistency will kind of get you to a position where you're like, you can look back and be like, Oh wow. Do you know, I've kind of progressed here. This is great. And then you might continue with it. You might try something else, but it's building those habits of starting being consistent and keep going and sort of just keep looking at the progress and not sort of think, Oh, this is wrong or this is wrong. And I made a failure here. Well, what are people going to think? It helps, it helps motivate people to like want to to, to take that first step or so, because if they know that like, Hey, this guy, let's say, Oh, Hey, Ryan's his podcast is super famous now. But then like back <laughs> when he started, it wasn't, it wasn't very good, but like, yeah. but like, yeah, cause he just started. It makes sense. So if he can do it, if he's in this position now, yeah. maybe I can do it as well, exactly. you know, and you help motivate people, you help like, um, give people courage to take that first step because like, like anybody, like any, any famous actor or any famous musician, you look at their first first auditions, it's going to be terrible. And yeah. because they kept doing it, it's the consistency that kept doing like say for yoga or for martial arts. When, yeah. you, when you, when you first, like say you, you first, like you're, uh, you're a boxer, right? Yeah. You start out, you get trash, you get trash every day. And like, if you get trash and then you're like, I, I, I guess I, I'm not very good at, it. I'm just going to stay at home and not do it anymore. Exactly. But you can't, you, you're, that's, you're supposed to get trash. You're supposed to be humbled every time you step into the ring. Yeah. But then, that is supposed to motivate you. So I want to be that guy now, the one that trashed me. Yes. I want to be better than him next time. So instead of have talking with your ego mind, like, uh, okay, I, I don't, uh, I don't, I don't like this feeling of losing. I'm just gonna not put myself in that situation anymore. Then there's no growth. You know, no. you need to be. You need to lose. You need to lose to 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 grow. You need to be in that position to realize where you can be in the future. You exactly. Know? Yeah, and that's um. And, and yoga was really good um, in terms of doing that for me, which is which is one of the reasons why I started the show and had yoga as the foundation. Um, and I mean, for example, I remember crow pose, trying to do crow pose. The number of times I've fallen on my face in crow pose, you know what I mean? I've, I've lost count, but you don't fall and then not try it again yeah. because otherwise you'll never do it. Now I sort of- Every, time you, every time you fall, you're, you're one step closer to getting that pose. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And every time you don't try, you're one step back. So <laughs> yeah, exactly. You, you just got to just, just gotta start. Um, and I think for, for, for people listening out there who are stuck and who maybe have an idea about something which they might want to do, but probably think it doesn't fit- into the thing that people like them do there is no there is no box yeah. you know i mean you, you don't have to be be in the box that other people put you in just try it have um, courage have courage have an open mind yes. and just experience and be okay with loss be okay with losing because when when you lose no one's gonna like aha you know you lost like most people if you're in a in a like say in a, in a community that's encouraging like yoga or say or boxing or people are not gonna be like haha you lost yeah of, People are going to be, oh, oh, well, just try harder next time. Yeah. Uh, lean, lean more into your fingertips so you can float the back leg off, that kind of thing. Yeah. Or like uh, use your hips more when you, when you throw the, yeah. the left hook or right hook, whatever. So people will help you. Yeah. If you, it's, you are the, you are your own worst enemy. You are going to be the one telling yourself like, ah, okay, I, 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 I suck. <laughs> so yeah. if you, you tell yourself that, then that's who you're going to be. You need to change that, that the voice that you have in your head sometimes. Oh, yes. That, uh, that, that inner voice. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> what did, um, so, Talking about that, what did your colleagues think when you decided you were leaving copywriting to mm. teach yoga full time? Were they supportive? Did they question your decision? I think they were supportive because I was already like well into it, all yoga because I was I was practicing all the time anyway. I, after work, I'll be like, okay, I'm going for yoga. So they sort of knew. Okay. Um, for my mom, I think it was okay as well. She didn't really understand it, like, because <laughs> yeah. like, oh, I can earn money and all. Like, what's this? Like, what you know? Why you? Why you? home at like 10, 10 a.m. <laughs> what do you mean you're done with work? 
or, or like uh, so it's just unconventional like when I yep. tell my, my my relatives or so like what what is yoga it's already uh, it's a whole new more questions to answer that you feel like uh, it's, uh, it's like people asking you what does this tattoo mean yeah. that kind of thing but um, support wise I, I didn't meet much resistance it was quite like a, okay just just do it like, it's not like a it's not like I was doing something drastic it was just a shift in career that in a career that was not conventional yeah yeah. but it wasn't like a like oh I'm gonna sell all my possessions and live in a cave kind of extreme thing lah. it was just like a okay just something different yeah okay if you're happy then go for it yeah that's a, I mean that, that that's good that you you had that experience I know it can go it can go two ways and I know yeah. um, you know there, there were some people who when you leave something like that um, a sort of a, a so-called safe secure stable career and there are people who look at you and who are really inspired and, and kind of like say good for you and kind of willing you to do well. But there are also those people in the background who they say- They don't just, understand, yeah. They don't get it. It's not necessarily that they wish you ill. They just don't get it. Like, why, why would you do that? Like that, that You're I mean, only six figures a month. Yeah. Why are you letting it go? Yeah, Exactly. And, um, and that's why it's important that you have whatever it is you decide to do, you have that strong why, you have that strong vision as to- what what is the life that you want and and how are you going to get there right. and if where you are now is it fitting in with that then you're doing this other thing because that's going to lead you to that point otherwise you will get swayed and mm. you know i mean people will start to put their doubts on you and you'll start to sort of question oh maybe this isn't a good idea and, and when also you, it's hard uh, because things don't happen overnight i mean you know i mean with your podcast i mean i don't know how it started out for you but you put out your first few podcasts or whether it's your your sort of first bits of content um, on the internet, on Instagram or whatever, and you're nothing. It you took a long get time, immediate yeah. feedback, right? And so you just think, well, is anybody listening? Is there any point in doing this? But you, the person who keeps going will be the one that gets to the end, right. not the person who stops right, right. because it gets hard. Um, yeah. And people need to realize this. Like People need to l- look back on like all the things that they started. Or like, say, look at anybody that's famous now. It, it wasn't an instant success. YouTube and all this kind of thing might show that like, oh, this guy was, he, he played one song and, and every, it became viral and yeah. like, therefore he's famous. These are the one-off stories. I'm sure it happens, right? Yeah. You strike the lottery. But then for most people, they take hard work. They put out like videos every week and then one day they, they, they finally get that scene or whatever and then it goes viral. And, and, and it takes consistency. It takes patience and it takes resilience. Yes. Anything that you want to do that's worth doing, it takes time. And then that's why you need to find something that you uh, enjoy enough to want to keep doing the thing, right? Say if if it's yoga, if it's yoga, you go for one class, you don't really like it, that's fine. Maybe maybe surfing is your thing or, or playing the guitar or cooking or whatever. Once you experience that thing, then you realize, Oh, I, I, I'm, I'm terrible at this. I can't, I can't play any notes, but, uh, I want to keep going for lessons and then one day you're like riffing out on uh, everything, yeah. you know? Yeah. Because then it becomes about the process and enjoying the process. Yeah. Not about so then you're not afraid about failing anymore, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah exactly. Um, no, I, th- I think that that's true. Um, and yeah, the, the consistency is important. There is no such thing really as an overnight success. Right. Uh, it might look that way, as you said, but there's a whole whole years of work that go on behind that. It's like the band that releases its first album. It's right. there. They've probably sp- they would have spent years writing that first album, and then suddenly, in the space of eighteen months, two years, I've got to write a second one and try and do the same <laughs> as the first. Yeah, and that becomes a little bit harder. Um, so yeah, th- there is there is no overnight success, in, and I think we said about resilience is, is a key one. And, and again, yoga is has sort of given that t- to me: resilience, discipline, focus, um, all of those things. Um, and it's taking that off the mat. Um, I mean, you, you learn it on the map, but if you can take that off the map and apply that to your life, then that's your life foundation. And then you can start to deal with adverse situations that, that come your way, mm. which brings me to, um, I want to talk about your uh, trip to Nepal. <laughs> I love all these segues. They're very smooth. Huh? Ah, you see, you got to give you credit. I've had practice, <laughs> You're on the ball. You know, consistency. <laughs> so um, I, I, I was seeing on your Instagram that you uh, you, you went for, um, on a trek to Nepal, yeah. um, which sounds amazing, but... What maybe doesn't sound as amazing is you got caught in a in a blizzard. Um, this happened a long time ago. Where this oh this was <laughs> this is when I broke up with my girlfriend and I was trying. I was like I wanted to travel. I wanted to do something crazy. So, okay. so then I went to Nepal in winter. It was like over Christmas. Okay. So I spent Christmas and New Year over there. So it was December and it was cold. 
and it's low season, so there's nobody there. And I went alone. So okay. I was in Bangladesh first for a week, and then I went over to Nepal for two weeks to to track Everest. And then uh, I went there, and I was I I joined this this uh, what's it? She was this Korean girl who 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 had a trekking guide and she was looking for a partner. This is website called like trekkingpartners.com or something like that. Okay. So I was just looking like who wants to go with me. So then I found this Korean girl and then we she had a guide and everything. So then we we went. It was the two of us plus him. And then afterwards on the first the first day because it's an eleven day trek okay. or twelve days. The first day, she she just gave up. <laughs> she wow. gave, she gave up. And we haven't even reached the, we didn't reach anything yet. We're just like at the first town heading to like the, to the, to the, to the, to the, 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 the start of the hill. Right. Okay. And every, so, so every day it's like a seven, five hours to seven hours walk. Wow. You start in the morning once there's the sun and then you stop because once the sun sets, it gets super cold. So it's like 5 PM, 6 PM. It's like no sun. It's freezing and it's winter. And it's low season, so there's nobody, and it's just us. And then, like first day, she gave up, and then she she had to go down. So then I got paired. So so the 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 guide bring brought her down, and then I got paired with another guide to go up. Okay. And then um, when I went upwards, it, it was just like. I was just alone all the time because my guy was being a dick. He <laughs> he just kept walking in front of me all the time. And I, I sometimes I couldn't even know where he was. Where he like was, yeah. so now I was just walking by myself and there's nobody there, nobody in front, nobody behind, and I'm by myself and I had a lot of time to think. Mm-hmm. And when you're in your own head, you start to like go a little bit crazy. It's like yeah. it's like it's like going on a with a meditation retreat. Oh, vipassana. Yeah, Vipassana. Yeah. So then like I'm just walking and I'm tired and I'm cold. Oh, the worst things. And you're doing something repetitive, right? Let's say meditation, just sitting down, yeah. walking. I'm just walking. I'm tired. And then you're just being very focused because you're, you're just doing one task, which is walking. And your goal is just to reach the town before the sun sets. Yeah. But then throughout the way, all the distractions come in. And there's no other, there's no music to listen to. There's no video, like there's no distraction. So I couldn't, I had to face what I, all my, yeah. and I had just broken up, right? So yeah. I was like, I'm in yeah, that state. That, yeah. I'm in a foreign country. I'm alone. I'm cold. I'm walking. I'm there's no there's no turning back, right? So I'm just I have to be very strong and just like just get to the place at the end of the day. One foot forward, left foot forward, right foot forward, left foot forward, right foot forward. And I just kept walking and then sometimes I would like stop and I'll cry by myself. It's super emo, it's a super <laughs> emo trip. But but I would like find pleasure in the small things like the running water, like, oh, hey, it's water. I'm going to scoop it up and splash my face. I would sit down. I would eat my my Reese's peanut butter cups for like an energy boost and I would admire the view. And then like, um, if my if I ever caught up with my shirt, my, with my, my guide at the front, then we'll chit chat for a bit. Um, and I had my GoPro and like that, that was where I took the video with the GoPro. So I think on the last, let me like seventh or eighth day, I don't know, I think it's seven day because you, you go up you go up and come down and it's like 11 days. So like okay. six, six or something. So on the, the, the fifth day or sixth day, when I'm almost reaching the thing, it's, there's blizzard because it's w- winter, winter, right? So yeah. it's the highest, it's the coldest time. Um, and I, so every night you would stay at a different lodge. Okay. And, and there was nobody in the lodge because I was the only <laughs> one there. So then he would go, like my guy would go sit with his buddies and then I would just be, and then something, still alone and I'm alone thoughts. and with my thoughts. And like I had, there was no, there were some tourists, but then they will have their own tracking groups, right? Yeah. And they would stick to themselves. And, and like, sometimes if you're alone, they won't even on the fire for you because there's no one there. So, so I'm like fucking, I'm freezing. I'm alone. I got no one to talk to. I got no one to share my thoughts with. Yeah. And I'm, and I, I didn't, I couldn't shower because there was no hot water yeah. and I was alone in my room and the, the floors like wooden, there's like gaps yeah. and it's like, it's a, it was a torture. So sounds beautiful. <laughs> so then I was, I think, okay. So, so on the, the next, the last, the, the day of the blizzard. So we were walking towards the, 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 the base camp. And then it was, it was blizzard. And then like my, my, my guide was like, okay, there's this blizzard over there. We got to walk faster so that we don't get caught in it. Mm-hmm. And then like, if if he was lost or, or or if he wasn't there, I would be fucked because yeah. there's I can't see anything like this. It's just snow, and then like 
a ledge that goes down <laughs> on one side. So I'm following footprints, but also there are no footprints because of the snow. And then he's like, okay, I think we're going that way. I mean, he, I'm sure he knows. Yeah. But then it's also like, because everything, even if you know how to go home, it's all covered in snow. So it yeah. looks dif- different. So he's a bit disoriented. And I'm like, oh shit, we're going to die here. <laughs> So we're just walking and then like, of course we, we made it back, but it was just like a very, like, I think at that point when I took that video is a very, like, a uh, 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 we were like, it's day six or day seven. We're tired. It's sun setting. We're, we're, it's like odds are against us. Yeah. And then like, uh, in that moment, it felt like a, like, you know, like sometimes when you're in, you're dealing with a lot of hardship, then you just start to laugh. You, you start to be like, what the fuck are we doing here? We started to laugh. <laughs> yes. Then like, so like me and him were just like laughing. Like, oh, look, that's the storm. We're going to die here. Like, look at it. And then we were just dancing. I think I, I didn't, it didn't show in that the video on Instagram, yeah. but I think there was one time we put the GoPro down. We started dancing because he would always play this Nepalese song on his phone. Okay. And then, then I started to, like, hey, what's that song? And then we would always play it and we would always sing it. So that's like our theme song. So then we played that song and we were like dancing and like just like ha ha, ha walking because we you know you, you reach that point where like you're kind of crazy already. <laughs> yeah, we've already gone past that. Yeah, point. but I think um it was a it was a it was a journey inwards as much as it was a journey outwards, and I the lesson that I took away from that trip was that it's if you look at the task in a very grand like if you look at it from outside it looks very impossible like how are you you're gonna try to everest that sounds impossible i could never do it but if you narrow it down can you put one foot in front of the other Mm, yes i can then that's all you that's all you're doing that's how you climb the top of the mountain that kind of thing so can you put one foot in front of the other yes then you can do that can you dedicate five minutes of your time out of your day to practice this yes then you can do it. And all it takes is five minutes a day to reach whatever you want to do, right? So then when I, and, and that was a lesson that I, I realized and I, it was very motivating. Like, ooh, okay, I did the thing and it was painful, but I did the thing because I just kept telling myself, okay, left foot, right foot, left foot, right foot, left foot, right foot. And then like, before I know it, I'm there, right? So then it was... But then there was no one to share the experience with me or so, right? <laughs> so then I was like, oh, okay, I'm here. So uh, why is no one congratulating <laughs> me? Where's all my praise? Like there was nothing, none of that. So then, I, because there's no internet there. So so then I was like, okay, then what was this for? Was this for a, a, a Facebook post? Like what was this for? So then like that, then that makes you reevaluate more things as well. So then I was like, okay, okay maybe this is just for me. Um, then I walk, I walk back and then like, you know, you're just more contemplative. And then you get home and then like, of course, like any big trip that you come home from, you come back and then you're, you're at home in the comfort of your home. And then you realize like, ah, oh, oh, the warmth, oh, my bed, so comfortable. Oh, warm showers, oh, home cooked meal. This is all so nice. And you start to feel a bit more grateful for that. So then the, that trip, um, helped me grow as a, as a, as a human being, as a man, it made me stronger in different ways. It made me more, more resilient, more grateful. And you need that kind of thing, you know, you need to step away from the safety of, say, Singapore, the bubble of Singapore, step uh, into a, 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 a outside of the fire, right? Or step into the fire before you realize, like, we're, we're, we're all good. We're actually fine. There's nothing to worry about, you know? Yeah, we're, we're built for this. Yeah. Um, one of the affirmations which I, which I, I really like um, and I, I give to, to my coaching clients is I am the type of person that's capable of doing hard things. Because again, it goes back to that um, concept of safety and of comfort. We're conditioned to think that we can't do these things because actually everything's geared towards comfort. The advertising, um, what our parents say, get a stable job, get a nice job, get a good salary, buy a nice house. You know I mean, have a nice family, all of these sorts of things. We, we live in, the, in we're sort of conditioned to live in the conventional. Um, and I mean, in that story, and there's so much to take away from that. Um, but actually isn't that everyone has to go to Nepal and went through what you went through. You can get that experience, as you say, by, again, picking to do the thing which seems hard, but which you want to do. Um, whether it's being on the mat, whether it's learning the instrument, whether it's public speaking, whether it's launching a podcast. And what I really, well, there's two things in particular that I picked out from that. One is finding pleasure in the small things. Mm. Because 
we take so much for granted in life and we sort of walk through almost on autopilot. We just do things without thinking. Um, I mean, the fact that running water comes out of the tap, mm. the fact that, do you know what I mean? You can take your phone and book a taxi or you can call someone on the other side of the world. All of these things are fascinating, but they just become so routine. We yeah. barely think about them. So being forced to take pleasure in the small things, which is why gratitude is, um, is, is, is a great thing because when you're doing a daily gratitude practice, when you've gone through the first few days of the big things, I'm for, grateful for my health. I'm grateful for my family. I'm grateful. Then you've got to start digging deep and thinking, okay, wow, I'm kind of, what am I really grateful for? Mm. And it forces you to think about those things and to look at life in a different way and to reframe them. But the other thing, which I, I, I really, um, really liked and smiled at when you said it is when you got to the top and there was no one sharing, yeah. there was no internet, you couldn't yeah. go on Facebook or Instagram and sort of share it. And then he starts thinking, okay, well, what was this all for? And the fact yeah. that he said, well, it was for me. And that's it because the, the goal is almost not the point. It's the process is what it takes right. to get there. And that's kind of what makes you, that's kind of where you figure out who you really are. And having a vision, having a vision is good because it gives you a direction. So if you didn't know that your direction was to reach the top of this mountain, then you would have been walking around aimlessly in the stone in the blizzard. And it's right. kind of, well, what's the point? Because I don't know where Ooh. I'm going and I haven't got any idea, but you knew where you were going. So although it was difficult to get there, Interesting. you had a point to get to. So by having that point to get to the whole idea of taking one step at a time oh. is at least you're taking one step. It's a small step, but at least it's getting you to where you want to go. Right. If you're taking one step at a time in a circle or, or in a nameless line, what's the point? You know what right. I mean? Because you're just getting more and more tired. You're getting colder, more and more unhappy without any, anywhere to get to. But actually when you get there, it's not like it ends because well, one, you've still got to come down, but two, you've then got to think, okay, well, what was all that for? Right. And three, there's going to be something else that, that, that you want to do. So. Right. Yeah, that, there's that's, a lot to unpack. Yeah. yeah because like, like it, it, let's say you have no goal. You're walking around in circles. Then what's the point? You're just going to freeze there. If you have a goal, but you're not moving forward then what's the point? And it, all it takes is just one step, one yes. step. And, and if all you can do is one step, then you will get there. It's just a matter of time. Yes. Right. Yeah. And, oh, <laughs> I have lost my thought again. I had something that you, you said something about it and I wanted to mention, I wanted to share about it. Uh, That's okay. I mean, oh well, it, it's gone. If it comes back, I mean, maybe, yeah. maybe we'll, we'll catch it after, but that's why I wanted to talk about, um, well, all of these things really, yeah. the podcast and then the, the check-in and also the yoga as well, because they all sort of demonstrate almost the same thing, but in different ways, in different right. environments, that, that thing about starting, being consistent, just taking one step, knowing where you're going. Um, and all of these things are important because if you're in a situation which you're not happy with, you kind of need to know where it is that you want to go so that you can then right. take the steps to get there. That's what I, that's what I, I, I remember now about Excellent. how, <laughs> about how like, what, when you reach the point, when you reach the peak, what is this for, right? Because yeah. if the destination is what the, it's never about the destination, it's about the journey. Because yes. there are people that can take the helicopter and fly up to the peak and take a photo. And then, but then what was that for? You never yeah. went through that. So then once you go through the whole cycle of it, the journey of it, and then when you do reach that point, you realize that that point is irrelevant or rather it, it, that, that wasn't the, like at the, at the bottom, you'd be like, Oh, I want to, once I reach there, all my problems will be solved. Yes. But once you get there, nothing changes. You know, it was the journey. When you reflect back, it was the journey that was the lesson. And then now you realize that oh, now, now I got to find another adventure and another adventure. And you got to keep putting yourself through all these quote unquote hardships to, to grow because then on the grand scale of thing, all these things are leading you to, uh, 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 your true self, your higher self, right? The more resilient, stronger self. Yes. Yeah. It's all. It's all growth yeah. and you've got to go through the process. You've got to, well, you've got to do the work, right? Mm. You've got to do the work to get yeah. that growth. Um, so as you said, you've got to do the work to get up to the top of the mountain to kind of get out of it, what you're supposed to get out of it, as opposed to, as you say, flying there in a the helicopter, taking the selfie and leaving, then yeah. you haven't done the work. So what do you get out of it? A nice photo. Mm. Um, is that the point? Might be the point for, for, for that person, um, but it's not the point in the grand scheme of, of, of growing and of, mm. You know, I mean, if, if you believe the, the ultimate, um, our, our ultimate aim is to kind of reach that, that point of enlightenment. I mean, it's, it's not, that's not the point. The point is that we, we evolve each day and we're taking a step sort of closer to, to what we're meant to do towards our Dharma. And if we're not doing that, then kind of what's the point? 
You're just running around in circles. <laughs> running around waiting, in circles, waiting to freezing, freeze. <laughs> being unhappy, and crying to yourself. <laughs> uh. Woo! Wow. Um, yeah, a lot to unpack there. And um, yeah. it was... Um, I'm glad we kind of got to that and, um, yeah. and, and I kind of found out about that journey because the way that you told it, it was just, I was just thinking like, yeah, this is just such a great metaphor for life. Um, <laughs> I never realized that until you, 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 you rationalize it in that way. Like, yeah. Okay. Good. I, I feel like my work here is done. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we always seem to get to this point in these interviews, which, which mm. is great. We kind of start and then we kind of get into some deep sort of, heavy philosophical stuff, um, all of which is great and which is really relevant. Um, and, and I love it. Um, so let, but let's um, sort of try and bring it back to, uh, we'll come to sort of the, the sort of the, the questions that I, that I like to ask all I guess, um, which are kind of related, but maybe a little bit more straightforward. Although sometimes the question that seems straightforward is the one that again, takes us on the tangent and that's okay. You know, that's the beauty of having your own show. Um, okay. So <laughs> you do whatever um, you want. <laughs> so what I, what I like to ask, um, what question I like to ask guests is, is about their, their, their morning routine, whether oh. they have one and, and if they do what it is and, and what it does for them. Because I think that, um, having some sort of structure um, r- routine, um, practice, whatever you want to call it, um, at least for me, kind of really helped me to kind of like anchor myself mm. and feel like I had some semblance of control over a particular portion of my day. Mm. Um, so yeah, do you have one and, and how does it look like for you? Uh, my morning routine is to wake up and use my phone for 45 minutes. Oh <laughs> man, everything I counsel against. <laughs> no, I mean, I mean, okay. Um, but I, I actually like, I, it's, I do do that. Mm-hmm. I mean, maybe not 45 minutes, but like, yeah. I check my phone the first thing I wake up and I hate it. I hate it. I'm not advocating it, yeah. but like, it's just like my alarm is there. My, yeah. I got to see what time is it. Um, I got to check my schedule or whatever. So like, it's all there, but then like, so is my Instagram. So is my fucking like my video games or whatever. It's I've all there. I've got some tips for you. I'll share them with you. <laughs> yeah. So like, I've tried to like, um, put it at the table far away, but then like, but it's just, I don't know. I just feel so like, I'm, I'm trying to work on that. Yeah, for sure. But Hmm. I, I've heard some, I heard a podcast about someone saying about how before you, like the first thing you wake up, check in with yourself before you check in on the world, you know, before you open your emails and look at what Twitter is, you know, whatever that's going on in the world, check in with yourself. And that can be through meditation, through just enjoying a cup of coffee or just being mindful for the first five minutes or something like that, which I am trying to practice. Like I I meditate, but I do it more at night. Okay. So I, I think I have more of a night routine than a morning yeah. routine. Okay. My morning routine is yeah, I wake up, I got to go because like I got to teach a class or whatever. Mm-hmm. But my nighttime, at least I can have time to unwind. Then I'll meditate. And then I'll try to not use my phone or my, my computer, like mm-hmm. the technology. Yeah. And and then I'll just meditate and I'll just go to sleep. Okay. Yeah. Sounds good. Yeah, we'll definitely uh, talk off air about your, uh, <laughs> what your morning we've seen. Uh, only because, I, I mean, I've been there. I know I know what it's like, partly from a personal point of view. Do yeah. you know what I mean? You kind of wake up, as you said, your phone's there, alarm goes off, and you just kind of get into it. And also from a work point of view, do you know what I mean? Yeah, you're yeah. Deal and you're kind of checking what's going on and how your day's going to be. So um, I've I've been there, and I know what it's like, and um, I know that it wasn't it wasn't good for me. Um, because... You, the, the quote yeah. that you said was good, but um, and, and, and the way that I sort of phrase it is that you, you end up, starting your day on someone else's agenda Ooh, um, and yeah. and if you've lost control of the first uh, the, f- the point you've woken up yeah. how do you get it back for the rest of the day right 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 whereas at least starting the day with interesting I like control this. you um it doesn't mean that you're going to be in control for the whole day but it means that you're more mindful of what control feels like right. and you at least feel like you've had some sort of you've done something for you you've, you've had time that's protected and that's for you right um and you haven't kind of been pulled off to someone else's um to someone else's tune um you know i mean setting boundaries which is a uh, something right, that, right, I, right. that i'm big on so uh but no it's interesting and yeah and the nighttime routine i mean it's cool i mean it doesn't have to be morning i mean lots of people talk about morning and do things in the morning i do just because well, largely because of the kids as well it's right. just easier but um um we, we had a guest actually um a friend of yours gwen who for her it's more of Shout a, out to gwen. An, an afternoon <laughs> routine um so it's more having those things that sort of anchor you, that ground you um, in e- each day. Um, because I think that, again, if, going back to the uh, to, to, to being in the blizzard, if you don't have something that sort of anchors you and kind of gives you a foundation, then, yeah, you just wander around aimlessly and you go where people tell you to go, when they tell you to go there. Um, so, 
yeah, no, that's cool. Um, and it's good to have something different as well. And it's good to have somebody who openly admits that they just get on their phone. Because <laughs> everybody does of, it. Everybody wants to sort of say they have this perfect. I wake sort of, up and yeah. I meditate for like an hour and then I fucking like whatever. Exactly. Given the, yeah. the Instagram view, but it's good to have the, good to have the real view. And yeah. I think also it's something that a lot of the listeners can relate to because I'm sure a lot of them do that as well. And so it's like, okay, well, fine. There's this guy here. Do you know what I mean? He's been through all this. He's kind of done all the internal work. He's a yoga teacher, but even he still struggles with that. So I just think it's really real so thanks for sharing that thank you for asking um what tips or advice would you give to any listeners who are feeling stuck who feel they don't have direction who are thinking they kind of want to have a want to make a change um what would you have maybe said to to yourself or or, or to a friend who's in that position to myself hmm i think um i think to myself which then would translate to other people because it's it's through my own experience so i think like going back to the, the, the 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 nepal trip thing about like having one foot in front of the other yep. and just simplifying it, simplifying things because life is simple. Life is simple, but we choose to make it complicated. We choose yes. to dramatize everything. We choose to make everything like so complicated. Yep. And when you remove all this complicated stuff out of your life, things become very easy to understand. What are you here for? What is your purpose? Yep. What are you, why are you doing this every day? And when you, you you take a step back or you just focus on what you're supposed to do. It's just a matter of putting one foot in front of the other. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. Celebrating those micro steps, taking a step each day, you know I mean? Taking one step each day will get you there quicker than taking 10 steps and then not taking anything. Yeah, and have, a, have a little compassion for yourself. You, you know, you take five steps forward, one step back and then like you, Oh fuck, I failed. I, I didn't work out today. So yeah. like, ah, oh, fuck, let's just end this whole schedule. <laughs> Just gotta, you know, sometimes you cheat, cheat a bit, you, you eat a burger, yep. other times you diet, you just try, like, you just two steps forward, one step back, it's still one step That's forward, fair. yeah. Yeah, perfect. A perfect way of looking at it. Yeah, that's very, very sound advice. Um, what are you most excited about at the moment? Hmm, I think I'm excited about just teaching because I, I, I mean, I started teaching in home after the circuit baker lifted. Mm-hmm. So it's still quite interesting to me. I'm still finding my voice or still, slowly things are just being revealed to me as I teach. Okay. And then, so I'm, I'm, I'm enjoying this journey and what else am I excited about? Not much to be excited about seeing the <laughs> state of the world. I can't really travel or anything, yeah. but just excited about my own personal growth, I guess. Okay. And like how things are shifting because things are shifting okay. in, in whatever way that it's shifting. So I would like to see how, when all this is over, where is the state of the world going to be, you know? And I hope it's a, it might not be positive, but it might, it'll still be different and change is always welcomed. Yeah. I think we're all wondering because yeah. I think at the start of the year, obviously things happened and yeah. everybody was kind of like, okay, how are we going to adapt? Yeah. Let's just write it out to the end of the year. And now, I mean, it's very clear that it's going to spill into next year and who knows how long. Um, and there, yeah, there's been a huge shift in the world. Um, some negative, obviously, um, but, um, but, but, but some positive mm. just in terms of how things are done and what people are now accustomed to. Um, I mean, in the yoga space, the fact that people are accustomed to doing classes online now, which oh, yeah, it's true. Before, it's a new norm. You know? It is people before. I mean, there was definitely a, a line drawn that you can't teach yoga online. It doesn't translate for, for right. various reasons. And now. You know. I can do, you know, you can teach boxing online, you can <laughs> yeah, teach exactly. dance online, you can teach everything online. Yeah. So people are adapting and it's, it's, yeah. people's creativity is coming out. And I think that that's a good thing. And people are, are questioning the way that their life has been lived, whether it's that they had a long commute, they were traveling a lot for work, they weren't seeing much of their family. And they're now thinking, actually, do we have to go back to that? Is it really necessary? And they're seeing a different way of living. So... I mean, look, there are some people who are still waiting for normal in inverted commas to come back. Um, but I still think there are, there are a lot of people who are sort of adjusting to um, certain changes. Um, yeah, obviously no one wants to have continuous lockdowns and, and, and some of the restrictions that we have. But just in the terms of how they live their day-to-day life and how they, how they sort of um, approach things, um, hopefully that will change. Da- Darwin said about how the, it's not the strongest animal that survives, it's the one that's able to adapt that survives. Mm. Nice. Yeah. So regardless of how the world turns out in the future, everything might be online for, you know, mm-hmm. forever. And yeah. that, and just, we just got to adapt to that. Adapt to yeah. That. yeah. No, I think that's great. Um, slightly well, similar, but slightly different question. What are you most grateful for? Mm. 
I'm grateful for being here, talking to you. This is, yeah. Thank you. You're the second. <laughs> hey, nice. Um, I'm grateful for the people that I've met, for sure. The people that I've been able to talk with, to learn from, mm-hmm. to share and to confide in. I'm grateful for where I am right now, like in my life. Uh, I, I've always liked, like people always ask like, what, like, what's the best, like, how do I say this? Like, I think now is the best version of me. Right, right now is the best version of me. I wouldn't say like, oh, when I was 21, I was young and I, I, now is the best version that I'm in. So then I'm the most experienced. I've lived like, I've seen as, as much as I needed to see to form my own opinions. And like, I feel like I'm, the, I'm, I'm not confused about who I am. You know what I mean? So I like who I am now and I'm grateful for the experiences that has led me to who I am today. Perfect. Because I think, yeah, because I think that we can spend a lot of time regretting. Yeah, regret, yeah. Spend a lot of time trying to leapfrog where we are now, wishing the present away. Right. Um, but it always comes back to, and again, another affirmation, which is the one where I'm exactly where I need to be. Yeah. Um, and I think if we remind ourselves of that, it doesn't mean that we're, that, that, that you're kind of like quelling ambition. It means that you're exactly where you need to be now. So take the present, be here now do what you need to this do acceptance there. of where you are like exactly. there's there's some things like you can't control covid but you can control how you react to covid exactly yeah. and there's a lot i mean bad things happen to you sure but it's how you it's not about what happens to you it's what how you deal with it yeah. that makes you stronger so so it's just about like just growing and and what's that what uh amor fati just love whatever happens to you Ooh. yeah it's that I think it's a stoic thing. Oh, I'm, I'm, more, I'm more fatty, yeah. yeah. I'm really into the into stoics, but yeah, yeah, yeah. I've heard that word before. Love okay. whatever happens to you, good or bad. Nice, nice. Love it. <laughs> right, let's make our way to a uh, quick fire as we uh, we slowly come into land on this interview. So, is there a particular quote or words of wisdom that you live by or that you refer to daily? Mm, I don't know if I have a daily. I mean, like, I like stoicism a lot. But I think one when people ask me what's my, my favorite cro- quote, I have one that comes to mind. Um, you you are always changing, and that won't change. Wait, wait, am I butchering it? <laughs> so like everyone butchers quotes. You are always changing, and that w- uh, you are always changing, and that won't change. But whoa, wait, oh my goodness, <laughs> I'm embarrassed. <laughs> Look, it's, it's a difficult one because obviously you have these quotes and you see them yeah. when you actually ask to By Neil Gaiman, well. by the Graveyard Book. Okay. Um, yeah. Something like, you're always, change, you're always changing and that won't change. And, and you, 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 you're always changing and there's nothing you can do to change it or something like that. Okay. But like the, we'll point, the point of it is that like how you are still you, but you are always changing. Mm-hmm. So even though you're growing and you're changing to be a better person, but you're still you. Yep. And there is, uh, I think it sums up the dichotomy of it, like how you want to change to be a different person, to be a better person, but then yep. you're still the same person that you yep. were. So then it's about that acceptance of it and about how, um, y- y- like, you know how they say like every cell in your body, every seven years will change because yep the cell dies and then a new cell reborn. So then every atom in your body is changing every seven years. So literally you are a different person every, every seven time. years. Okay. So then you are always changing, but you're still you. Yeah. And that won't change. Okay. Uh, you are always changing and that won't change, but you are, oh fuck, I just had it in my mind. <laughs> the mind's not working today. <laughs> I, can I just do a quick little Google? It's a tongue, it's a tongue twister, this sure, one. Sure, you get, you get ahead. Um, what's, um, what's the most impactful book you've read in the last 12 months? I'm not a big reader. I mean, okay. I try to read, but then like, I don't read a lot. Okay. But I, I mean, I'm reading a book now. It's called Finding, Finding, it's by Donna Ferris. Okay. Finding Yoga or something like that. Okay. Finding the, <laughs> one thing at a time, let me find this quote first. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so we've, uh, we, we, we've kind of discovered today that Aaron is not that good at multitasking or we not at all. things. <laughs> but that's fine. We can't all be good at everything, right? Um, yeah. I mean, Quotes, uh, quotes are always a difficult one. I, I butcher them regularly. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Okay. You are always changing and that don't change. And you, what? You are, you are, oh, you are always you. There we go. Okay. Okay. 
you are always you and that won't change and you are always changing and there's nothing you can do about it. Okay. Does that make sense? That, does that make that sense, sense now? Yes. That it's a bit sense. of a tongue twister, but like, yeah. That makes sense. Okay. No, I like it. I like it. Yeah. And I can, I can, your explanation, I can definitely see, um, see the reason why it's a, it's a favorite, um, without a doubt. Um, okay. Yoga pose, favorite yoga pose and why? I used to like warrior three a lot. I, li- I like yeah. balancing poses, yeah. okay. but I don't really do a lot of warrior threes in my sequence, but I like balancing. I like balancing poses because it helps me to focus, focus. on. Yeah. Or maybe half moon. I have a lot of half moons you do, in yes. my sequence. So <laughs> okay, I'll, I'll change it. My favorite, favorite pose, yoga pose is half moon. Final answer. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. No, I've uh, done a few half moons in your, <laughs> um, which is good. Cause it's not something I would necessarily do, um, myself at home. So, uh, that's why I go to classes. Hey. Um, when you're practicing or when you're teaching, um, do you prefer music or no music? I prefer no music. Um, at YM, you play music because yep. that's just, you know, you have to. Yep. But I feel like the music is distracting and there is something beautiful about having everybody breathe in unison in a class. And um, I feel like sometimes the silence helps bring you closer to that state of flow, that, that, that inner silence, that inner stillness that you need to always, because music is a a distraction. It's a comforting thing to have if you're unfamiliar with this territory. So then the music helps ease you into the space. Yes. But then it also distracts you in a certain way. So I personally, I got no beef with music, but if it's too loud or if it's too distracting, then I'll, I'll feel a bit weird, but then that's on my, on me to be able to ground in my own practice. Yeah. So I have no real beef about music, but I prefer a silent class. I think that's a, an interesting point you said, because on the one hand, music can be distracting, mm-hmm. but yeah, if you're deepening your practice, it's like meditation um, or, or yoga. You know, I mean, if you're practicing in studio and there's construction going on outside or there's traffic noise outside, on the one hand, you can say, well, that's distracting. It's kind of ruining my Zen. Mm. But actually, you're supposed, like the whole process is teaching you to kind of rise above it, to be that stillness amidst the chaos. So the fact that there's noise is challenging, but it just almost forces you to, to work harder to kind of find that yeah. stillness within um, so yeah, I think, um, what you said is, is right. I, I've done both and, um, I now prefer without, um, as I think I've said before, but if there is music, it's kind of like, okay, fine. I just have to work harder to kind of focus on the internal and not the external. Mm. So, yeah. Cool. Very good. Um, and final question. Final, final question. Yes. Dream yoga retreat destination. Ooh. And I know we can't travel and we probably can't for some time, but if you could, where would you, where would you host one? If you were hosting a retreat, where would you be? Your- I, I'm, I, I think when that question came up, I immediately thought of Thailand because yeah. I like Thailand a lot. Um, I, I did my TT there. The first one oh, okay. was there and I've never really done a yoga retreat in Thailand unless, unless you count the TT, but it's not really a retreat, but it's, it's, it's close. It's cheap. It's warm. Mm-hmm. I did like, we, uh, my recent yoga retreat was in India, but it was during the winter season. It was cold and it's weird doing yoga in the cold. So yeah. I prefer like a more tropical climate for, for practice. And it's the food that is great. Like have you, the vegetarian food in yeah. Thailand is amazing. Yeah, it's good. And uh, people are friendly. It's not, it's not a hassle. It's not like I got to take eight hours to fly there or something. So I would say Thailand is the dream retreat. Yeah. Yeah. Thailand would be good. I wouldn't mind that. Uh, let me know when you're holding it. I'll, hey. I'll come along. <laughs> I'll come along and, and visit you. No, no doubt. Yeah, I realised that. Um, you know, I mean, we we got so sort of deep into into metaphors and, and other things that we didn't even talk about your your teacher training experience. Um, where else in Thailand was it? Um, Koh Phangan, but oh. it wasn't at the i. Like, it wasn't at the party place. It was yeah. like an island away from it. It's just oh. an island on its own. Beautiful. Uh, good and bad because like there's nothing there. It's mm-hmm. like you needed. You literally needed to to take a boat, a 45 minute boat out to go to a 7 Eleven. So wow. you really needed to stock up on everything before you went in. Yeah. And there was nothing there. It was just one restaurant that we ate there all the time. Cause that's the only place to eat. Yeah. Yeah. And then they charge super expensive. Like <laughs> I, I thought it was going to be chill. Audience, yeah. yeah. So that was it. And, um, it was, it was, I went, I went in thinking I knew a lot about yoga. I left, realizing I know nothing about yoga. 
common experience. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure you felt that way as well after your TT, you know, like... I'm, it's it's that um, thing where you... The more you know, the more you don't know. Yeah, well, that's yeah. the thing. And you, you don't know what you don't know until you're yeah. there. And then you kind of leave. And it's like... Because you, you go almost with an expectation that you're going to sort of leave with all of this knowledge. And you do. But there are... More questions. Like, far more questions. And there are all these different tangents. Yeah. It's kind of like, well, where do I start? Do I go to anatomy? Do I go to alignment? Do I go to chakras? Do I go to... Right. You know what I mean? And you can't do it all. So you've kind of then got to sort of figure out who you want to be as a teacher. And so you need to then teach a bit and kind of figure out what works for you, what, what you like, what kind of lights you up and then sort of pick the route you go down. So, um, transformation experience, but yeah, right, yeah. Leaves you with that's why you're always a yoga student. You know, you're always a student. Indeed. And it's one of the reasons why, I, I mean, it's a common phrase that people understand, which is why we use a yoga teacher, but I much prefer to be called a yoga guide because mm we're holding the space to guide students through, but we don't have all the answers. You know, we're probably a few steps ahead of some of our students or, I mean, if you're teaching somewhere like, oh, there's probably students who are yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, steps ahead of yeah. you in terms of their physical asana, but also maybe in terms of some of the other stuff as well. But they come because, you know, I mean, they want someone who will hold space for them and sort of mm. guide them. And uh, that's kind of what we do. We're not experts. We are just people who have had some learning and yeah, yeah, yeah. as we go along. So, Great way to uh, to end the, the podcast. Um, um, yeah, I'm sure there's going to be a, a lot more chat as we come off air. Um, before we go, um, is there anything that you have coming up in the future? Anything you want to tell the listeners about? Maybe, or maybe just sort of tell them where you're teaching and people who are in Singapore want to come see you. I mean, I got nothing planned. No, no, no travel plans. <laughs> nowhere to go. But um, if you want to, you can come and find me at Home Yoga. That's where I'm teaching at now. If you want to listen to my podcast, it's the Mostly Yoga Podcast on Spotify, Google, Apple, whatever major podcast things. That is. Same with, uh, side by side with the Yoga Den. It's right there. Yeah. <laughs> yes, we're both on there. And yeah, uh, yeah we'll, we'll, um, we'll stick links to those um, in the show notes. And yeah, I urge you to go and check out uh, Aaron's podcast. Um, I think that the, the, this one here, we do talk about yoga and we have some good insight and some quite deep conversations. But I mean, Aaron's is, is great, particularly if you want to get deeper and hear from some, from some sort of really experienced uh, yogis, both both from Singapore and, and globally. So yeah, go and um, sit down and, uh, and and get get your ears in, into that one. Um, and yeah, let, let me and let Aaron know um, what you think and what you've taken away from those conversations. Um, where people can find you, um, you, you're on Instagram. Obviously, the podcast is on Instagram as well. And we'll, we'll put those in the show notes. Um, any Anywhere else? Or are they the, the best place for people to get hold of? I guess, yeah, just Instagram. I have a Facebook page and a YouTube thing, but it's like... Just, just go to the Instagram, yeah. Yeah, when you're when you're one person, as as I I found out, it's very hard to be everywhere. So you've got to you got to pick your pick your battleground. So um, so yeah, Instagram at mostly yoga podcast, um, and also at Aaron Ing. Aaron, or is it Aaron Ing? Aaron Ing, it's it's a it's a it's like a verb. Uh, like, yes, <laughs> I did one day. Every time I see, I'm like, Aaron, yeah. People no. think it's my surname, like Ning is my first name. Uh, I said like, it yeah. first, yeah. But it's, no, it's just like it's like an action word. It's like okay. like yeah. But so my name is. A A R O N, yeah. but the Instagram has three A's, like so it's A A A R O N. I've literally I've just noticed yeah. that as you said. Yeah, yeah. I've written it down correctly, but I've only sometimes just people that. like they they mess it up. Yeah, because <laughs> my email is that as well. So then I forgot uh, one A. Yeah, I see. And yeah, and, and yeah, Aaron's Instagram is uh, is is rather entertaining. He has this uh this strange <laughs> habit of um blurring his face out as much as possible, um, and also lots of uh, lots of waving of fingers. So uh, yeah, go and check that out if you uh, want to be entertained, and then also just to sort of see uh, see what he's up to. Um, um, but for now, I just want to say thanks again for coming to the Yoga Den, Aaron. It's been great having you here. Um, really interesting conversation, as I knew it would be. Um, and yeah, we will definitely be uh, sort of keeping in touch and I'll be seeing what sure. you're up to. Thank you so much for having me, Ryan. No problem. Thanks for listening. Um, see you next week. Bye. So if you've been sat on the fence thinking about that thing you want to get started on, I hope that this conversation with Aaron has helped to push you in the direction of taking that first step. I'd love to hear from you as always, so drop me a line on Instagram at Ryan Spence Yoga and also at the Yoga Den underscore podcast. And let me know what you took away from this episode and what it is that you're going to make the first step on today. And as always, I ask this every week, but it really helps if you could leave a review for the show on Apple Podcast, helping to get the show out to others, help more people and let me know what it is that works for you guys and what more I can 
can do for you on the show. But for now, as always, go ahead and eat plants, give thanks, and do yoga. Peace.